We've been given two functions, f of x and g of x, and we wanna first find the answer to the two functions, f divided by g of x, and after we find f divided by g of x, we wanna find the domain of f divided by g of x. So step one, we wanna find f divided by g of x, so here we go, f divided by g of x, we take the f function, which is my purple one. Now, if I say divided by, we could, be, we could make a fraction, but I am choosing to use kind of the old school notation, f divided by g, so f division symbol g. Now, when we're dividing fractions, we know we turn this into multiplication and take the reciprocal of the second one. So I'm gonna have the purple one multiplied by, and then let's flip this over. So I flipped it over. When you multiply fractions, you multiply across. So I'm taking this times this over this times this. But before I multiply across, you can cancel anything, any numerator with any denominator. So that x minus two in this denominator and this x minus two in that numerator can cancel. So I'm going to cancel this one and this one. So when I multiply straight across, all I have left is x in the numerator, and all I have left in the denominator is x plus four, okay? Because those turn into ones when they cancel. We now have the answer to f divided by g. Any questions there? Okay, so once we get this, now we have to find the domain of f divided by g. And it is more than just looking at this equation and finding the domain of just this equation. We are going to find the domain of f, the original function, the domain of g, the original function, and then we're gonna also find a number or any numbers that would make the g function equal to zero. Because the g is in the denominator, and since the g is in the denominator, we can't divide by zero. So it's an extra consideration. If you are adding, subtracting, or multiplying functions, you just have to find the domain of, of the two functions separately and merge them together. But with division, there's an extra step. One more time, whatever function you're dividing by, you have to set it not equal to zero. And any number that you get out of solving that equation, you're gonna throw out. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit here. I'm gonna put these back in front of us. So I have the domain of F to consider, the domain of G to consider, and the function I'm dividing by, which in this case is g, make sure it does not equal zero because I don't want to divide by zero. Okay, my f function is this one here. When finding the domain, you're going to ask yourself, because we're not going to have any logarithms, so we're going to only ask ourselves two questions. Is there an x underneath an even root? No. Moving on. Is there an x in the denominator? Yes. So as soon as I say yes to that question, I immediately set the denominator not equal to zero. And the reason is I'm worried about dividing by zero when there's an X in the denominator. So I solve this little mini equation, add two to both sides. So I now know I do not wanna use the number two. Let's try to, if I put two in here, that would make two divided by zero, error message. The number two cannot be used, so it is not a part of the domain. Okay, then the g function. My g function here, now I ask myself again two questions. Question one, is there an x under an even root? No, moving on. Is there an x in the denominator? Yes. I'm worried about dividing by zero, so I'm gonna immediately set the denominator not equal to zero. When I solve, I get two, so I do not wanna use the number two. Let's try it, I plug two in. 
That makes six divided by zero, error message. That's why I can't use two. Now it's a duplicate, so it's redundant. Don't use two in either one of those. Okay, and then lastly, I'm solving an equation. It's different than what we just did here. I'm setting the entire g function equal to zero. Now, if a fraction is equal to zero, the only way that happens is if the numerator is zero. Think about any fraction out there that equals zero. Zero over five, zero over nine, zero over any number equals zero. So to solve a fraction equal to zero, you are really just setting the numerator equal to zero. So I subtract four over and I get negative four. Now let's try it. I plug negative four back in here. Negative four plus four is zero. Negative four minus two is negative six. Zero divided by negative six is zero. This is the number that makes the g function equal zero and we wanna make sure the g does not equal zero, so don't use negative four. Our domain is every number on the number line. That's where we start off. So here's our entire number line. I've put on the number line the two numbers that I wanna leave out. So I'm gonna leave out negative four and leave out two. To leave it out, we would put an open dot on that. And now we can use any number to the left of negative four in between negative four and two and to the right of two. Graphing it is just helping me with my interval notation for the answer. So let's start from left to right with the numbers that I can use. As far left as I can possibly go is negative infinity. So I can use all the numbers from negative infinity up to the number negative four, but I can't use the number negative four, so I put a parenthesis, union, and then I can use the numbers in between negative four and two. So I have my negative four and two, again, I use parentheses to leave out the numbers, and then I can use everything to the right of two, so not including two, parentheses, two through infinity, and this is a list of all the numbers I can substitute into f divided by g of x, which is known as our domain.